separarnos duele un poco, pero a la vez hay tranquilidad porque sabemos que va a haber un bienestar mejor. My story. <laughs> Quisiera tomar en cuenta ese punto de, de que todos somos iguales. No importa la estatura y lo físico, porque en realidad todos somos iguales. I think people look at us differently. Definitely, I think people look at us differently. And I don't think it should be like that. Definitely not. The precise moment of uh, the day that we got uh, some troubling news here at Nature Fresh was on um, June 30th. COVID really hit hard and we ended up having quite a bit of testing. People tested positive and they ended up shutting our farm down. Never felt more helpless. It's the equivalent of taking a Formula One race car at full speed and jumping out, hoping nothing will happen to the car. Estaba muy emocionado de, de tener la oportunidad de venir aquí a Canadá. Bueno, nos dedicábamos allá en Guatemala al cultivo de café, maíz, frijol, cosas así sencillas de campo. Y cuando escuché hablar de Canadá y de los cultivos que se realizan aquí en Canadá, pues en su momento tuve miedo porque no tengo la experiencia mínima de trabajar en estos cultivos, pero a su tiempo uno va agarrando esa práctica y uno se va haciendo también. I mean, I came here in January, right? And they came, I, I heard they said, Canada is very beautiful, but when I came here, I don't see beautiful tree or nothing. I, I said, what's going on? No, no leaf, no nothing. <laughs> Everything dry. <laughs> We even uh, get the snow from the tree in front of the house and just put in the cup and put uh, some sweet on there and try to eat it. <laughs> You know, for me, I don't know somebody else, I, but I think the most reason is it's almost the same. Like we are born in poor city, poor family. We want to come here to work, to make money, to support family. Uno de diez años. One ten. Sí, el segundo tiene seis años. Mejor darles eh, el estudio que se merecen, una carrera universitaria. Algo que tal vez nosotros no tuvimos por falta de recursos, pero que si estando acá, en el lapso de 10 años, sí se los voy a poder dar. You have to be a migrant worker to come here to work, so that's a good, that's a good start. Set your target because you're making so, so much choices to come here, so you have to understand that you have to put something at, aside to make sure that, hey, I need a house, I need a car, I need to start a small business that I can move forward in life. That your child can be growing up and said, hey, this is what dad leave for us and got, you understand? So it's a perfect opportunity for us to get, be here. Perfect opportunity. So when we're looking at the uh, migrant worker program, um, we have uh, several different countries that we deal with, from Mexico to Jamaica, to Guatemala and Hondurans. We've worked with many of these countries. We see people coming back for many, many years. Um, I've been here now for about 20 years, uh, and I've worked side by side with some of these guys that have been here now for 18 years. June 30th, that morning, we had a conference call with uh, several senior people within the organization uh, and with local health authorities. And the news was how to uh, work together with them and move through this COVID-19 issue at hand. Shortly in it, without 
I would say three to five minutes, um, we could tell that uh, things were not looking very positive. Canadian consumers depend on us. For that matter, the U.S. consumer base depends on Canada. And uh, on June 30th, that all stopped. Out of the 575 tested, there were 12 that were symptomatic. Nobody was on a ventilator, nobody was hospitalized, nobody saw a doctor on a continuous basis. However, the uh, health unit did forbid anybody to enter the farm, and so the asymptomatic people were not allowed to go back to work at first, as we were told, and the negative all had to quarantine, and so effectively the farm was shut down. What can we do? We can't go to the farm. We know that the fertilizer is about to run out. If we don't maintain the plants, the plants will die. Fue para nosotros como se siente cuando tiene uno su área propia se siente como es cultivo propio de uno y cuando uno lo ve que todo se echa a perder. Lastimosamente a veces a uno le duele en el corazón, aunque uno diga pues no es mío, es del patrón. Again, we're, we're trying to provide healthy food, right? And to see how much product went to waste here, it's, it's absolutely incredible. It's, it's amazing how much food is gone. And, and it was within days that it, that it happens. Uh, number one, first and foremost, you need to protect food supply. Food supply is key to the existence of human race. And if you shut down the food supply system, all chaos will break loose. I don't think there was a need to shut it down. I don't think that, that this had to happen. It didn't have to happen. At the beginning of this pandemic, like many others, we were tracking what was going on around the globe. Uh, I think as, as it became clear that the virus was, was entering North America and was going to become a concern, uh, we reached out to our partners in public health as well as in healthcare uh, to get a better sense of what information we can be providing our growers. We started to implement some protocols that were intrusive and restrictive, but they were meant to keep our employees safe. From uh, April on, our employees didn't leave the farm. We put in ATM machines uh, through Bank of Montreal. We took their groceries and their shopping lists, and we did their shopping for them, delivered it in trucks. And so they had no real le reason to leave the farm. Uh, we thought that we were succeeding fantastically. And uh, there was more and more pressure to get people tested. And, and we did have a positive case. El día que yo, que yo comencé a sentir síntomas, bueno, yo estaba trabajando, pero la empresa no sabía que estaba enfermo. Nadie sabía que yo estaba enfermo. ¿Por qué razón yo estaba trabajando aún sintiéndome enfermo? Porque yo valoro, valoro la oportunidad que tengo aquí, ¿verdad? Eh, no sé si cuenta eso para la empresa, pero para mí cuenta mucho dejar una buena imagen. Y yo tengo aquí familiares también, eh, tengo un tío aquí trabajando y la verdad que no pienso dejar manchada la imagen de él. So at some point uh, we were told that the asymptomatic people would be allowed to continue to work. So we said, okay, let's set up some mass testing. We wake up in the morning, we went to work. Uh, when we went to work, the supervisor come and said, hey, we're gonna have, um, we're gonna go and do the COVID test. So we said, okay. Nos hicimos las pruebas y luego la siguiente noticia fue de que nos iban a aislar y que nos, nos iban a llevar a, a un hotel, pues. Ese día fue un día muy loco, diría yo. Yo pienso que cambiaban muy drásticamente, tanto como para la compañía y para nosotros, ¿verdad? Porque... We only want the people who are well, who are feeling well, they're, they're positive, but they're truly asymptomatic to be going back to work. Luego decían de que nos iban a dar permiso de trabajar en los próximos días a los que estábamos infectados, pero luego lo cambiaron de que no. That guidance was developed, I think, in view of having a very small handful of asymptomatic positive people. Well, there was a lot of people in charge, but nobody was accountable. The fact that we were told from the government that asymptomatic positive workers could return back to work and then we had to go back and tell them that that was not true any longer, that trust, that rapport, that respect that they have for us, that we have for them, 
all went down out the window real quick. They're in a foreign land right now, and, and they need friendly support just as much as they need, you know, an employee support. Nature Fresh employs roughly 600 people. Roughly 360 of them were migrant workers. Um, a lot of them we had to um, evacuate out of their housing off-site, put in hotels all over the place from here to Windsor. When, when the people who tested negative were isolating, uh, they were not super happy because the Red Cross was uh, less than organized. Um, we, we actually got people to the hotels on our own and we were feeding them. We made sure they had three good meals a day. Uh, when the Red Cross took over, it actually went downhill. The food, the main thing is the food. The food wasn't great. And we speak about it so much about the food, the food wasn't great. And we keep on getting the food and it wasn't something that we used to. And when the farmers were not even allowed to deliver food anymore, uh, a lot of things happened, like, like some people got Coca-Cola and Doritos for breakfast. Employees that are here under the Temporary Foreign Worker Program uh, really form a key component of our agri-food workforce across the country. You know, when I say migrant workers, it sounds like cheap labor, doesn't it? And that's the perception that a lot of people have. In fact, the migrant workers cost us more than Canadian workers. We've had a help wanted sign out in front of Nature Fresh for probably 22 years now. The letters sometimes fall off. We have to put the letters back on um, and, and the jobs sometimes change, but we're always looking for people, always. We hire all Canadians that come along that want to work that are willing to do hot, sticky work. But still, we find ourselves needing a lot of migrant workers. I'm always cautious when I answer this. Honestly, we're spoiled, absolutely. Everyone goes to school, gets education, and you know says, hey, I'm too good to go pick tomatoes. I'm not willing to do that. Some people maybe think about it, but once they come in and actually feel the heat and see the work that actually happens, they don't last. It's an immediate ask, can I transfer to the pack house where it's cool? And if the warehouse is fully staffed already, unfortunately it doesn't happen. A lot of people at last two hours, three hours, and they end up leaving. Locals will not do this job. Without the migrant workforce, we can effectively kiss our fruits and vegetables goodbye. Mm, to me, I'm very happy to work because I'm always a hard worker anyway. And because I'm a farmer when I'm young, right? I'm not afraid to work hard in the greenhouse, hot, heat, whatever. To be fair, we are worthy of coming here and they should be grateful for us here. They should be. Because working in the greenhouse, it's not easy. It's not something that easy. And they're not doing this job right here, I'm telling you. The determination that you have to have to go through a day in that greenhouse, it's not something that just you just think about. You have to have your whole mindset just to do the job. Yeah. I'm just heading to the baseball right now. No, I just got off the call with Red Cross. That's not going too good. We were trying to work with local authorities on how to do more mass testing and our hope to maintain uh, still some type of workforce within the greenhouse to keep tending to the plants. Uh, that obviously didn't happen and it, it, it got shut off pretty quick. Uh, at the beginning of this pandemic, um, communications were perhaps a little bit fragmented between different sectors and different groups. And so I think if there had been a larger push to work more collaboratively across, across sectors, across agencies, that could have helped to get us where we needed to be quicker. We can handle groups of people. We can, we can make sure that we keep them isolated in certain areas to allow us to continue to tend to our crops. Uh, so this was the majority of the conversations that we had to show and prove that we would be able to manage this, um, should we be allowed to get back into our facility um, and operate under uh, basically the guidelines of uh, local health officials. Today, the Ontario government announced a three-step approach to reduce the spread of the virus. New guidelines that would allow asymptomatic workers to stay on the job. It was exciting because now we knew that we could get back in and we could actually do something about it. Out of the 360, we were allowed to bring about 145 back in. 
these folks were positive, but they were asymptomatic. That was a feeling that I was so happy. Te da alegría y te, de, te da una tranquilidad de que vas a estar trabajando nuevamente y que todos los compañeros están seguros. I can tell you I had goosebumps around my entire body. Vine con mucha emoción. Nuevamente es como regresar de Guatemala. As farmers, not only greenhouse farmers, but, but all farmers, we have not done a great job of telling our story. Farmers tend to be pretty private people. Many of them just want to run their business. They want to grow food. They don't think about promoting all the work that they're doing to the public. And I think that's why sometimes the public doesn't understand what's going on. There have been a lot of negative statements that have come out in the media and over social media uh, about the sector, a lot of finger pointing. 10 to 20 men in one house, six men in one bedroom, 10 men sharing one washroom. That is disgusting, Yay! disgusting. Now I'm not saying that there are no farmers that are misbehaving. In every profession, there are always people who don't behave as they should. But I can tell you that by far the majority of farmers do behave properly. They're, you know, creating a separate set of rules for a specific group of workers isn't fair. There is no regulations. It's a wild west of, of the absence of protections for agricultural workers, specifically for migrant workers. Sometimes I, I wonder why do people believe that farmers mistreat migrant workers? I wonder if it's the viewer's own unspoken prejudice. Nosotros ingresamos al negocio con la intención de comprar y aunque no le entendimos lo que nos dijo, pero sí nos pareció que sí nos estaba tratando mal. You know, they went into town, they, they wore their masks, they did the same thing as everybody else did, and sometimes comments are made to them about, you know, why are you here, um, even though they're taking the same precautions, and in some cases are taking precautions that resident Canadians are not taking, they're still feeling like they're being judged. They were asked to do the same things as all Canadians, but I think made to feel more shame when they did. Porque nuestros países tienen fama de que hay mucha delincuencia, hay muchos que les gusta robar, pero también no todas las personas que emigramos somos malas. Llamarse uno trabajador inmigrante parece a veces algo triste porque uno siente ser mendigando en estos países. Before I came here, I have a lot, a lot to responsibility back home, right? I have kids, I have parents, I need money. I came here, I achieved is I build a house for my parents in Thailand, and I help my family, my brother, sister, my cousin, whoever have a hard time, I help them, I help them all. Back home, I didn't have a stable job. I get the opportunity to come here, and I push for it to come here, because having family, you know you have to support your family the best way you can. Once I can support them, it makes me feel like a man.
Many of these employees come back year after year to the same farms. Uh, our farmers have relationships with them. Some of them have gone back to the home countries to visit them there. I think sometimes as outsiders who don't farm day to day, myself included, we sometimes don't uh, recognize how strong that bond is. You ask any farmer in Canada if they have any workers at all, they probably have migrant workers. And without those migrant workers, the farm shuts down really quickly. And so does our food supply in Canada. That would be a very grim, sad day for us if that ever happened. Cucumber crop was ready to be harvested literally the day that we shut down. By the time we got in, it was just too late. Looking back, maybe we should have fought harder to keep it open, although under a Section 22, there's just not a lot that we can do. Our hands were tied very quickly. It's heart-wrenching for them to see the amount of product that is now just gone, it's wasted. If, if this happened to every farmer around here, there would be a huge food shortage very quickly, and the food prices would go extremely high, so then a lot of people wouldn't be able to afford it. 